welcome back. I'm Krista from Plant Lux, and I am here today to repot this Monstera back here. And if you guys need some tips and tricks on how to repot a Monstera deliciosa that has either outgrown its pot or otherwise is in need of a sort of repot rescue, check this video out. Also see here um, there are some whiteness on the leaves and stuff. I actually had to treat this plant with a pesticide because there was an unknown insect that was sort of killing it and I have since cut off a few of the bigger leaves that had um, died because I, I honestly do not know what the insect was. Um, so I went ahead and had to spray it with pesticides, unfortunately. I did it outside though, so no one was harmed. If you look at the front side of this leaf, for example, you can kind of see the yellowing and browning on the, the tip here. And then on the underside, you can kind of see, I don't really know, I guess you'd call that some browning on the back. Anyway, so I went ahead and did that last week. And now I am just interested in getting as much of the soil away from the roots as I can. I'm gonna show you that today. And also um, I'm interested in just getting this in a bigger pot. I'm gonna show you what your, like down below what it looks like. So you can see here, these are some giant arrow roots and you can kind of see into the pot here. It's inside of a basket, but this plant is a few years old and it is a monster. So we are here today to try to replenish the soil, give it some new soil, and also um, clean the leaves because I don't really think it's good to have, you know, something hanging out on the leaves like, like the uh, pesticide that I treated it with. Honestly, I used one that most nurseries use, so I actually went to the nursery and asked them what, what should I do, and that's what they told me to do. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I think that's about it. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and do my thing and uh, probably won't be doing much talking, but I will stop every now and again and kind of try to give you like, the heads up on what I'm doing. And Whiskey has been patiently waiting to be walked, of course. We know, we know you do, we know, we know, we know you Crazy. So this is our situation. You can kind of see how the roots have come out the bottom of the pot. Look at all the aerial roots. I do have this on a stick. This thing is giant. <laughs> so we're gonna do our best. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to cut it out of the pot. It is really root bound. So it is what it is. I'm trying not to, to mess with the roots, you know. Um, I'm just not one for scoring. I don't like to score anything. So I'm trying to be careful. Okay, oops, I just cut a little bit of the root, but that's okay. So you can see the roots, there's so many roots and it needs soil, it needs more soil. So yeah, it's actually kind of damp. It looks like there might be a few insects in here. it in this pot already has built-in drainage on the bottom so this is what it looks like it's very very root bound as you can see there's hardly any soil left so this plant was very much in need so guess what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna try to just loosen up the roots a little without cutting them just really looking to replenish the soil. 
And in this case, <laughs> it looks like there's basically no soil to speak of. So yeah, it's not really going to be that hard to get rid of the soil because there basically isn't any. Now, if I'm going to put some uh, soil mixture in the bottom of this container, let that rest. So this was, I don't know, I like mixed the soil in here, so that's why it looks like dirty, <laughs> but I just used it to mix the soil. Um, and this over here, I know you can't probably see it, but right here. Here's our soil and I'm gonna mix it all together. It is my, uh, sorry, here we go. My Aeroid mix. Um, I will link my Aeroid, um, you know, soil mixture in the description below. But basically what we have going on here is uh, perlite, vermiculite, um, coca coir, and some general mix, uh, potting, potting soil mix and also uh, worm castings. I think I got it all. Yeah, oh, and some activated charcoal. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my bucket and because I don't have a spoon handy, hold on here, let me get down here a little bit more. So I, <laughs> my camera stand stinks and yeah, it accidentally dialed SOS and now I am afraid to use the camera stand. So, because the sheriff's department called me back and asked if I was okay. And yeah, no, I do not want my camera stand to call the sheriff's department because we are just repotting plants over here. It's nothing serious. <laughs> okay, so this is the soil mixture I have and I'm just gonna you know, show you like really quick, um, oop, sorry, you know what we're doing here is just mixing it up. I don't have a spoon and I am one-handed. So here we go. and fast forward to the next step. Okay, here we go.
Hey guys, so I just went ahead and put it in the pot and then I sprinkled some diatomaceous earth on it. That's why it looks all ashy. Uh, that will not hurt the plant, but that will prevent any eggs or whatever, um, you know, from producing and yeah, anyway. So it'll help with the bugs if there are bugs. Okay, and then the next step would be to put rocks on top of this because I have cats and they like to, you know, do their duty in the pots. So I always have to put rocks in the bottom. All right. So I pre-wet paper towels and that's what I did here. So that is it. And then I usually get like the thicker kind of paper towels so that they don't rip when I'm wiping my leaves. So again, these are pre-moistened and then I just spray it with neem oil. I make my own neem oil. I use a squirt of soap, a hand soap, water and neem oil extract. This is like a bottle that I've recycled like a hundred times, so. And then all I do is spray it. You might wanna put down some plastic because this does get really messy and it'll drip on your floor pretty big time. So you might wanna get something on your floor, like a towel or plastic sheeting or maybe even a garbage bag that you open up. Like, you know, you make it flat. So anyway, this is how I clean my leaves, just to make sure that I get all of the bugs off. Um, whatever were on there, I have no idea. But again, I did pre-treat this a week ago with a pretty stronger pesticide. Um, and just so you know, the, the quality of paper towel that you're gonna be using to clean your plants is kind of important because you don't wanna leave residue on your plant. And some paper towels will leave residue. So you don't want to get the cheap ones for plant cleaning. You want the ones that are like, kind of like washcloths, I guess. Um, there's a bunch of different brands out there. Probably three ply. Um, that's what I would do. So, all right. And then just take your time. Try not to be too um, in a rush. And if you can't, if you have a big plant, you know, try to like space it out. So like do one leaf at a time, take a break. Uh, that way, you know, you're not rushing and, you know, being a little bit aggressive with the scrubbing. You gotta be gentle. You don't wanna be aggressive because you could tear the leaves, especially at the fenestrations, it's very easy to tear these kinds of leaves. I've done it myself before. That's the only reason why I'm sharing that with you so that maybe you can avoid making that same mistake yourself, you know? So it'll take some time to clean the whole entire plant, obviously, but it'll be worth it in the long run because not only will your plant be, you know, ready to tackle any pest because it'll be pest, preven pest prevention going on here, but also it'll look really pretty and your leaves will love it because they'll be able to breathe, no residue on them. And then again, neem oil is a, um, it's a natural pesticide. It's what we call a botanical pesticide. So it's not really a pesticide. Uh, they use it to treat skin conditions, actually. Um, I don't know much else about it with regard to that, but I do know that it is non-toxic to your plant and it's not gonna hurt you. Um, I know that some literature out there online may or some people rumor it that it might hurt humans but just because it's listed as a, a, a pesticide doesn't mean it's a pesticide per se um, it's a botanical pesticide meaning on on au natural all right so you can stop recording now because i'm just gonna continue doing the same thing